are different kinds of blending methods and in this tutorial we will discuss which one is the best for what part of the portrait because some of the methods are better in certain parts of the portrait. I never discussed about blending graphite or charcoal pencils before but I talked about shading so if you want to learn about these seven shading techniques the tutorial is right here for you. Sometimes I get questions like how I can access your real-time tutorials they are not on YouTube but they are on my Patreon and my Patreon address is right here. A blending stump, a Q-tip, tissue or your fingers. Which one is a better option when? Let's discuss now. Now I want to show you how the different blending methods affected which medium in what way. So the first one I want to talk about is blending stump. So blending stump is great if you want to keep the lines darker and also if you want to work on the single line but at the same time blending stamp and q-tip are very similar when you look but if you look closely you will see that especially on the lines q-tips are a little bit blending out more and but if you don't want that if you want to keep your lines kind of intact and you don't want much smudging then you should prefer blending stamp instead especially in charcoal look how uh, of a great result we see here. I just went over it with my blending stump and you don't see any smudging. Another thing to consider is the Q-tip is going to kind of brighten up the color. So it is much lighter here than here. So if you want to keep the darkness, if you want to fill the white of the tooth much better, then again, I think blending stamp is a better choice. But then I want you to take your attention here. You can see that when I use my dirty blending stamp here, you can see some lines here. So this is not good when we are filling in, for example, white of the eye. But then you can see it here that is much smoother with the Q-tip. So if you want to have a smoother result when filling in, then definitely you should go with the Q-tip instead of blending stump. So these are very similar results when you look at the graphite one. But with charcoal, I think you need to consider um, these factors when you're filling in or when you're blending. When it comes to brush, fingers and tissue, so they again have similar results, but if you look at the brush one, you will see that it is much better in filling in the white of the paper when you compare it to when you blend with your fingers and when you blend with the tissue. Another thing to think about is tissue is going to again lighten it up it's going to blend very, very well, but like in charcoal too, it's going to change the tone, the value to a much lighter one. Another thing to consider if you're doing lines, definitely neither of those is best. If you're working on lines, if you want to just blend the line in a linear way, then you should consider blending stamp or Q-tip. But if you're working on larger areas for toning, as you can see here, um, then you should definitely consider one of these brush fingers or tissue. Fingers in charcoal gave the darkest result. That was the best one, guys. But for graphite, I don't recommend using your fingers because all the oil from your skin is going to transfer onto your paper and it's not going to look very high quality and also you cannot really go over that afterwards so definitely i don't recommend that the second thing to consider is again brush kind of lighten up the value although it filled all the white off the paper you can see that it's much better than the tissue but if you want more smudging if you want to kind of create a more i don't know uh, areas like with most of your charcoal then definitely tissue could be your best friend when you look at the dirty tissue mark here and then dirty finger and then you see the dirty brush how the result came out I think the brush and also the tissue have the smoothest result here but if you look at for example what my fingers just did you can see the texture of the paper here with the one with I, I did with my finger but here you can see it and here you cannot see it either so that's why i don't think um blending with your fingers is a perfect idea there either using your dirty fingers but 
when I do backgrounds, when I do clothings, if I'm using a lot of charcoal with my charcoal block, I usually use my fingers, guys, to blend them out. So, in overall, what I want to tell you is that if you're working on um, or if you're working in areas that you want to keep darker as much as possible, then I highly recommend you to do blending stump. And if you want to, again, have smoother results and linear results, again, Q-tip is the best for smaller areas. But for largest areas, brush, fingers, and tissue is your best friend. And the brush I'm using is basically a watercolor brush. Now let's look at which blending tool is the best for the which part of the portrait. When we blend the white of the eye, the best result comes from the Q-tip because it creates this smooth transition of the gray values. But if you want to use your blending stump, I think the best place to use it is the eyeball and the line around the iris. It keeps the lines pretty dark. Here you see me picking up some charcoal with my Q-tip and blending it into the iris. And around the eyes, we used first the tissue because tissue will blend everything in and it's going to look very, very natural. All the transitions look very natural. Here you see that the first layer that I created here is I blended it with my tissue and this is a perfect smooth first layer. One thing you need to consider with the tissue though, it's going to definitely lighten up the value and if you want to keep your darker values then you need to do multiple layers. What happens if you have lines under the eye? After you draw your lines with your graphite or charcoal, then with tissue again you should blend them out so that they have a natural transition to the skin underneath. Another smooth transition happens with your brush. So if you use your brush on your charcoal and graphite and blend it just like this then you're going to have very natural looking skin i don't like my eyebrows look very pencilish i don't know how to explain that but in order to make that look more natural i always go over them with my blending stump because my blending stump creates wonders with the lines after i blend them i go in with my eraser and i do my second layer the third thing i want to talk about is the nose for the nose, I do so many layers. You see me doing the first layer here. I'm adding all these graphite pencils. You see that 2B, 4B here, and of course the nostrils are charcoal. After I finish the layer, what I'm gonna do, you guess? Of course, I go in with my clean tissue and blend them all very nicely. This is not bad for the first layer, but of course it's not enough because I want them to look 3D. I want my portrait to look realistic. But when it comes to the nostrils or when it comes to those lines on both sides of the nose, I use blending stump to protect the darkness of the color. Then I go with my second layer. Of course, my graphite and charcoal looks much darker now, but don't worry, once we blend them with my tissue, they are gonna look very natural. This is the third layer. This time I'm adding more depth, and while adding my depth, I'm also blending them. I'm erasing, I'm drawing, and then blending. Then it gets the same or similar value that I already have around the nose area. For the cheeks and the forehead area, of course tissue is our favorite to go because it's a very large area, it's easy to blend like that. But also I recommend you to use a brush, especially if you're working with charcoal. See how it is easy to add those shadows and mid-tones with my brush. And depending on how much charcoal you want it on, you can easily arrange the values this way. Another tip that I want to show you, let's say you have a dirty tissue, it has charcoal on it. You can always go to the darkest part to give more natural looking shadows with that tissue. But make sure that you don't use that dirty tissue on the highlighted areas of the face. When it comes to the lips, honestly, we use all the techniques. The middle of the mouth is the darkest area. Once we draw that, we should go over it with our blending stump because it's going to lock those dark places in. And it is linear, so it works really great on that line. With the charcoal or graphite that is already on our blending stump, we can define more soft lines. 
When we fill in the lips with very light colors such as 2H or maybe 4H, after that using a tissue will soften all those lines out and it's going to look not only pretty but also very natural. Of course we fill in the lip with another layer and afterwards now we are using our q-tip because we want to lock those values in. Then we go in with our eraser and we give more details, we give the highlights, we draw the lip lines and after all those details what would you do? Would you go in with a tissue or would you go in with a q-tip? The correct answer is q-tip because after giving so many details you don't want to go with your tissue because it's going to erase everything. Another tip that I want to give you is using the charcoal to give a base layer to the teeth and once you blend that when you're drawing the gum in order to blend the gum area what are you going to do? What are you going to use? I think the best thing to use in the gum area would be a blending stump because it has a sharp Point. It can get into very very fine areas and finally with the charcoal dust you can give a very natural looking lip tone, lip value with your brush. Look how easily I made those lips right now. Perfect. With the hair we have two different methods that I want to tell you. With charcoal I used tissue first to blend all this charcoal because I wanted a very dark base but you can see that the tissue is lightening up the value so I didn't really like it. What I did though with my other layer, the second layer, this time I used my fingers. As I told you in the beginning of the video, when you use your fingers, you lock those charcoal in much much better with no white of the paper is showing and here this is proving my point. And after this of course I go in with my eraser and I add all the waves in the hair. And the second thing I want to talk to you about is with graphite. So how are you going to lock in all these things with graphite? Here you see me making all these hairlines with my graphite pencil and some charcoal pencil strokes as well. Afterwards, after I'm finished with these lines, I'm going to go over them with my blending stump following the direction of the hair. This way those lines will be locked in and also those white areas will have a very nice tone, a very nice valley of grey, a beautiful transition of grey. I am not putting any pressure on my blending stump because I don't want to damage the tooth but definitely I'm blending every single line there. Another way of blending the hair is you can blend with your tissue or after you created these lines you can go over them with a watercolor brush or any kind of drawing brush that you have. See those white areas have now a very natural looking very soft value transition of gray. And now I have the graphite pencils here it's short hair and I don't like how it looks like pencil strokes it doesn't look natural at all to me. What I'm going to do is I go over them with my tissue first applying a little bit of pressure and then I'm going to add the second and third layer of drawing and erasing. What about blonde hair? On the very far right you see I already drew some hair lines. Now I'm going over them with my tissue again. I'm giving this very fine light gray base layer and then I'm going to go over it with my pencil and my erasers to give a natural look to this hair. You see for the hair we do blending stump and tissue and sometimes we use our brush. Let me show you one more thing with blending stump. Here I have the hair okay but I am using this blending stump so that the end of the hair, the tip of the hair and the beginning of the hair looks more natural because I don't want them to look darker. Another way to show you that how we can use blending stump is on a long straight hair. In this hair you see that there are lines okay but they don't look natural, they don't look like hair, they look like animes. So what are you gonna do? You go over them with your blending stump and boom. Do you see the difference now? It's way better now and I can go in with my eraser and give more realistic details, more flying hair with my pencil. It's going to look more realistic now. So this is it guys, this is how we use different blending methods because for each area of the portrait a different method is always better. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. I'll see you in my next video. 
Thanks for watching my video. If you like my videos, please don't forget to subscribe. And for my real-time narrated tutorials, visit my Patreon, patreon.com slash Stay with art and love.